Handel had been writing and producing Italian opera for about 30 years in London, and he was pretty successful at it. But in the early 1730s, Italian opera became less and less popular in England. Now, Handel was basically a freelance composer. He even had a room in his house in London dedicated to selling tickets to his own concerts. And that meant that his livelihood was really tied to public tastes. In 1737, his own opera company went bust. In 1741, he got an invitation to go to Dublin to produce a series of concerts on behalf of three charitable organizations. And that must have come as a huge relief because he was deeply in debt by that point. But more than just bailing him out, that invitation would ultimately result in his most successful composition, Messiah. There's a legend that Handel produced Messiah in just 24 days, which seems to be pretty accurate. But unlike so many stories of works written in short order, it had nothing to do with a looming deadline. He had the score finished before he left town to go to Dublin. Call it inspiration, call it a manic episode. Handel completed this monumental score in less than a month and with plenty of time to spare. The librettist was Handel's frequent collaborator, Charles Jennings, a gentleman who lived off his inheritance and who Samuel Johnson described as a vain fool crazed by his wealth, who were he in heaven would criticize the Lord Almighty. This seems like a fair assessment. Jennings once wrote, Mr. Handel's head is more full of maggots than ever. And writing about Messiah, he said, he has made a fine entertainment of it, though not near so good as he might and ought to have done. I have with great difficulty made him correct some of the grossest faults in the composition, but he retained his overture obstinately, in which there are some passages far unworthy of Handel, but even more unworthy of the Messiah. Mr. Jennings was a difficult personality. But he was also a serious theologian, and he selected the biblical text for Messiah with a lot of care. We think of Messiah as a Christmas piece, but it's really not. Pay attention and you'll notice that there is no nativity scene, no Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus in a manger. It's not even strictly about the life of Christ. Jenin's goal with the libretto was to illustrate the entire biblical arc of man's relationship to God, and the role of the Messiah in that story. Also involved in the production was Matthew Duborg, master and composer of state music in Ireland. For the premiere, Duborg led the orchestra from the first stand of the violins. Keep in mind, of course, that in Handel's time, there would have been no conductor. There was also Jonathan Swift, more famously known as the author of Gulliver's Travels, but also the dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. He gave the St. Patrick's Choir permission to perform in Messiah, but unfortunately he was also losing his mind. So he immediately denied that he had ever given his permission and told the singers that if they performed, they would be punished for their disobedience, rebellion, perfidy, and ingratitude. And of course, the soloists. Of the soloists who sang the premiere of Messiah, Susanna Maria Sibber was the superstar, and not because of her brilliant singing voice, she actually was not that much of a singer at all. She was a famous actress involved in some tabloid-worthy scandals. But for Handel, this was a breath of fresh air. He was used to taking on difficult Italian divas. But Charles Burney wrote that Handel was very fond of Mrs. Sibber, whose voice and manners had softened his severity for her want of musical knowledge. So that's the cast of characters Handel would have encountered when he arrived in Dublin with the score for Messiah complete and in hand. He even had a brand new hall to work in. The music hall on Fishamble Street had just opened when Handel arrived, built by the Charitable Music Society on College Green, because music was so closely associated with charitable organizations at that time. It could comfortably seat 600 people, but you could squeeze in 700. For the Messiah premiere, there were notices in the paper asking the ladies to attend without their hoops and the gentlemen without their swords so they could pack them in as tightly as possible. Now you know you've got a runaway hit on your hands when you ask the ladies to attend without their hoops and Messiah sold out. No tickets available at the door. And in fact, the entire series that Handel had been invited to produce was very successful. But Messiah was special 
It was the only concert which benefited three charities, two hospitals and one relief society for people in debtor's prison. Handel and the singers all donated their fees, and 142 people were released from prison as a result of the premiere of Messiah. Handel continued annual charitable performances of Messiah at the Foundling Hospital in London and willed them a set of parts so that they could continue performances after his death. Charles Burney wrote, it has fed the hungry, clothed the naked, fostered the orphan, and enriched succeeding managers of oratorios more than any single musical production of this or any country. Messiah is this rare musical work that presents a message of hope inside the concert hall and still managed to spread a little bit of it out in the real world as well. It's no surprise that we still love it as much as we do.